Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our inaugural Dallas Stars franchise mode here in NHL 20. So in last episode we had the, a one trade that we made which was acquiring Kevin Lowe and we got rid of Dave Babbage just because we kind of wanted to up our defensive overall a bit. But we managed to make the playoffs with a 36, 32, 10, and 4 record which is not the greatest record at all. But we're playing Germany in the first round of the playoffs. Now Germany's kind of an interesting team because they got a lot of older guys, but they also got a couple young guys, like four or five young guys that are all in their 20s. So they're kind of in a team that's in the middle of rebuilding, I think. So it's kind of neat to see. Anyways, let's get into this first round of the playoffs and see if we can make it to the second round. Last year we got bounced by the Chicago Blackhawks. This year we're looking to get back to that second round again and maybe further, I mean maybe another chance to win a Stanley Cup. So. Here we go, game number one on home ice at the Reunion Arena. Arena, Jeez, that was kind of a tongue twister. Reunion Arena. First period of play, and it is 1-1. I'll take that. Antonio Strangs, he's one of their younger guys. Somehow he's up to an 82, which I've never seen him get that high in terms of overall, so that's kind of interesting. And Mike Medano ties the game up with seven seconds left in the first to give us a 1-1 game. Second period, and it's 2-1 for Germany. Stefan Matteau. We do actually have a couple injuries right now at the moment, so that might be why we're losing at this point in time. So let's see what happens here in this third period. See if we could tie this game up, bring it maybe to overtime at least. Like, we should be able to beat a Germany team like this, but then again, our records aren't very different. They're both really weird. Pelling kill... Long penalty kill and Kevin Levelli makes it 3-1 to one for Germany. So, looks like we're going to be losing in game number one by a final score of 3-2. to two, As Broughton got one late, but it was not enough. Final shots were 34-30 in favor of Germany. Hmm. So, here's the goals. Medano from Cornell and Cavallini and Broughton from Wong and Kevin Lowe. Three stars in that game, Joseph, Mateau, and Braun. So we got to watch out for Curtis Joseph. He's pretty much the main reason they'd win a Stanley Cup if they go on the win it is because he's like kind of the veteran guy that is really good on their team. And multiple players are eligible to be dressed, which is good. So, oh, wow, okay. For game one, we had Mark Bergevin playing center because of injuries. Damn, I should have saw it, looked at looked at that beforehand. So Lindell is back. Greg Adams is still out, and Pearson is back. Okay, but damn, that was not good putting Bergevin as a center. Huh. Imagine if he would have scored that game, I would have probably laughed my ass off at that. Okay, so if we lose this game, I might make some line changes, but I think it also could be because we're missing like Greg Adams in our lineup. So. I'm not going to take it too hard if we lose this game, but hopefully we can bounce back with a win on home ice and at least split the series headed back to uh, Germany. So game number two, still on home ice. Come on, boys. First period, and it is scoreless. Shots are 11-7 in favor of the Eagles. Second period, and 2-1 for them. Not good. Our offense does not seem to be working good. Strange scores again, shorthanded. I don't like that. Mike Craig ties it up, but then Le Valley gets one right back to give Germany the lead going into the third. Shots are 22 19 in our favor, but we are still down by one goal. Hopefully, we can find somebody to tie it up for us. So, here we go. Third period underway. Let me make sure this is at eight times. Yeah, that's at eight times, I think. There you go. And damn it, Darren Rumble makes it 3 to 1. Damn, this team does not seem to be able to score goals on uh, Cujo. Yeah, this team is like kind of like maybe a bit too inexperienced, some of the guys. And we're going to lose 4-1 to one in this game. So our offense is just not doing anything in this game, and we're giving up too much goals. Hmm. Yeah, I might make some line changes, but then again, if Greg Adams comes back, he might be able to score some goals, but we are probably going to make some line changes. Because we're not off to the greatest start. Did our AHL team make the playoffs? Yeah, I think they did. Nice. Good job, Texas. I think that's like the first time they made it so far. So Greg Adams is not back yet. So we're going to make some line changes to kind of get this team hopefully winning more games. 
So let's put, take a look at what we, yeah, we'll do that. Stapleton there and Wong there. We'll test that out, see how that works. And yeah, we'll leave it like that. Defensively, I think I'm going to split up Zalabski and Hatcher because the two of those guys seem to be like not very good together. They were like really badly minus during the season. Okay, so let's go into game number three in Germany. See if we could get at least a win in Germany. Hopefully we could get two and then maybe we'll start winning games once we go back to home ice or something. So, game number three in Germany in the Köln Arena, I think it's called. Let's go to eight times. First period, and it is scoreless after one. We're doing pretty good in this first period, though. Out shooting them 10 to 4. So, we're limiting their chances, but we do need to get some goals on our own. We only have, like, three goals in the first two games. Second period, and it is 1 to 1. Richard Matvichuk scores a shorthanded goal. Interesting. But Petrov scores a power play goal on the same power play unit, I think. So shots are 20 to 12 in favor of us, but it is a 1-1 game. Still, our offense has not been that good. Hopefully, it could break through here in the third. Pelling kill. God damn it, Petrov scores another power play goal and Cole Sillinger. Damn, our penalty kill is now doing bad. Oh, this team is not looking good. We might get swept by a European team in the first round. Unless we have like that reverse sweep, that's really rare, but I don't think that's going to happen. Because this team is just, I don't know, there's something about this team that's not really consistent. So Curtis Joseph's been playing really good in this series, and he's probably the main reason they've been playing so good. But then again, they're outscoring us like 10 to 4 in the first three games. Yeah, that injury to Greg Adams is probably screwing us over. I think he should be back for game five if we could somehow win this, but we might be swept in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, here we go. Game number four. I'm not going to make any line changes because it's too late probably at this stage anyways. Let's do a real-time simulation since it's potentially our last game of the year already. Actually, maybe we won't. First period, one nothing us. Okay. First time we've had the lead in quite a while. Paul Cavallini scores. We're out shooting him eight to six. Second period, and there's the offense I needed to see. Broughton and Craig score. We get three goals in the first two periods. We only had four in the last three games before this. So this is definitely a way better game. Arvidsson scores on the power play again for Germany. We need to really clean up that penalty kill. It's letting like four power play goals in the last two games. And are we going to win our first game of this playoff round? Yes, we are. And I think Greg Adams should be back this next coming game, which is good because if he is back, then hopefully that gives us the offensive boost we need. So Cavallini from Wong and Cortnall, Broughton from Pearson and Hatcher, and Craig from Pearson and Lowe. Three stars in that game. The Bokov bounces back. Broughton and Pearson. Okay, so I think, like I was saying, Adams should be back for Game 5. I'm kind of flying through this round a bit. Yes, Greg Adams is back, so hopefully that's the offensive boost we need to uh, maybe make a bigger push this year. Because Greg Adams was one of our best players. So there we go. We got to win two more games to tie the series, and then three more to win the playoff round. So here we go, Game number 5. Let's see if we can win a game with Greg Adams back in the lineup. First period, and one nothing Germany. Not good. Antonio Strange again. Shots are 10-9 and nine in favor of Germany. We need to have a bounce back second here, please, boys. Second period, still one nothing them. It looks like Cujo's having a bounce back game of his own. Shots are 24-15 in favor of Germany. Come on, guys. We need somebody to come through here. Penalty kill. Nicely done. This time we actually killed a penalty. It's kind of surprising. We need one goal to tie it. Please, Mike Medano, you have never been anywhere at all. Oh, there you go. Mike Craig ties the game at one. A late goal in this third period. 
and we somehow pass them in shots as well and we have a tie game going into overtime or a goal away from being eliminated or a goal away from forcing a game six who wants to be that hero for us kevin lowe if it's kevin lowe that would be pretty awesome because i traded for him but anybody on our team would be good penalty kill nicely done Another penalty kill. Stop taking penalties, guys. You know how good they're on the power play. Penalty kill again for the third time in overtime. I don't know who's taking all these penalties. And are we going to double OT? Yes, we are. Shots are 44-41 in favor of us, but it's only a 1-1 game. Who's going to get the OT winner? Come on, boys. Medano. And we score, and it's Russ Cortnell, and we force a game seven somehow. So we managed to force a game six. Here is the goal. So Craig gets a late goal from Broughton and Pearson and Cortnell from Medano and Adams. Three stars in game number five. Nabokov again with another really good game. Cujo the second star and Cortnell the third. Okay, so we need to win this game or else the season is done. Just like the last two games, but we have picked it up in terms of offense a bit. And our defense has played a bit better as well since Adams has been back in the lineup. So, game number six. This is going to be a very tough one since we're back in Germany. Let's see if we could tie the series in force a game seven back on home ice. We're going to go real-time simulation since we're getting down to the end of the series. So, let's see what happens. We're off to a good start in terms of shots. Both goalies are playing good as well, just like they did last game. And it is going to be scoreless after one. Shots are 10 to 4 in favor of us, just like last game, I think. Let's see if we can come through here with the goal in the second period. Come on, boys, who wants to step up? Medano? Cortnell? I don't know who wants to come through. Greg Adams, maybe? Final seven minutes. And Germany's going to score not good. Mike Bullard, they open the scoring, but Zarli Zalapski ties it up. A guy that doesn't score very often. Shots are 25-13 for us going into the third, but we have a tie game again. So this is just pretty much like last game. I don't know if anybody's going to come through here in regulation. If it does happen, it would be surprising. It might be another one of those overtime situation games. Who wants to be our hero? Dave Gagne, Neil Broughton on that fourth line, maybe even. Kevin Lowe. <laughs> Come on, boys. We need one goal to win this game, potentially. And we are going to be headed to overtime in game six. Once again, we have our backs against the wall. We're a goal from being eliminated or a goal from forcing a game seven after being down 3 nothing, which would be very impressive. We're out shooting them 37 to 17, so we should have a good chance to get the goal. But uh, Cujo's just been really lights out, it seems like. Okay, here we go. Overtime, we need one goal. Who wants to be that hero? Courtney, you got one last game. Power play for us, and we don't score on it. Penalty kill. Come on, guys, don't take penalties in overtime. It's a long penalty kill as well, and we managed to kill it off and save our season. Are we going to a double overtime situation back to back? Yes, we are. Somehow, Curtis Joseph has made 47 saves already. We're out cheating by 20 shots. We should have this game in the bag, but Cujo seems to be the difference right now. Who wants to be that hero here in this double overtime? Double OT underway. We need a goal. We need a goal. And we're going to get it somehow. Trent Clatt has forced a game at 7. We were down 0 3. But somehow we've won three straight games, and this team seems to be gelling a bit more. So Zalapski from Clatt and Wong, and Clatt from Wong and Lindell. So this team's offense has not been that good so far still in this first round, but it seems like our defense has definitely picked it up in the last three games because we've only allowed three goals in the last three games. So Nabokov might have a bit of a clutch factor to him, it seems like. But we're somehow going to a game seven. First game, we only scored two goals, then we scored one, then we scored one, then we scored three, two, and two. Yeah, this team is not scoring all of goals, but we're managing to maybe force uh, our way into the next round. So let's see what happens here in game seven. 
another real-time simulation game will be another double OT game I have no idea let's see what happens Arvidsson scores to make it a 1-0 Germany early I don't like that because that means Nabokov might be a bit off his game this one power play for us come on we need to get a goal and we don't get it done come on boys we're out shooting them like every single game it seems like but we still go to double OT no matter what so the shots are 12 to 7 in favor of us after the first period and it is a 1-0 game second period underway we need a goal in this period please boys there you go Trent Clatt the OT hero from last game and it is tied at 1 who wants to give us the lead Come on, boys. Mike Medano has been nowhere at all. I don't know why he hasn't. Power play. And we don't score on it. And we are going to the third period tied at one, just like we've done in the last, like, three games, I think. Shots are 25-20, or not 29, 25-19 in favor of us. Let's see what happens here in this third period. Potentially the last uh, period of our season. Long power play chance for us. And we don't convert on it. That's going to come back to bite us potentially. Another power play chance. Damn, we can't convert on those power plays. We need to find a way to do that. And we are going to overtime for the third straight game. We've had a, two different heroes in our last two overtime meetings. And once again, we're out shooting them by 20 or more shots. Which is just insane. We should be able to win this game, but if we don't, it's because of Curtis Joseph. Overtime underway. Are we going to go to another double overtime game? Penalty kill. Nicely done. And, oh, you got to be joking me. Yeah, it's because of Cujo. Mike Bullard has ended our playoff run in overtime. And once again, even though we outshot them badly, we managed to lose just because our offense does not seem to find itself at all in the playoffs. Damn, we're out in seven games in the first round. We almost had a historic comeback, but we just could not get it done. Damn, that really blows. We just barely squeak into a playoff spot probably, and then we lose in the first round. So our only goal is Clat from Wong and Hatcher. So yeah, Mike Medano did not show up at all. I don't like that. But Nabokov definitely played really good in those last four games. But yeah, Kujo was just way too hard to beat. He's definitely their rock, it seems like. So let's take a look at player stats for that first round. And then we will sim up to the awards and all that, I think. In the, well, the retirements will be next episode, actually, I think. Yeah, retirements will be next episode. Just because it's going to be too long if I do retirements in this episode. Okay, so player stats for that first round. Let's just take a quick look. So Wong had five points, Braun had four, but Medano only had two points, and he had no goal or one goal only. Like this team was good defensively, it seemed like in the playoffs, but we did not get any offense really. A lot of players with no points that should have had some points. And then the players that did have points, not a lot of them had point, uh, a lot of points. Like, Wong had a good playoffs, but the rest of them not so much. Gold hitting wise yeah, Nabokov was really, really good. Is that his first ever playoffs? I don't remember. No, it's his second. Yeah, definitely a big improvement from last year, so hopefully he's even better next season. But, yeah, anyways... Let's uh, sim up to see the final awards for the season. Like I said, the retirements will be in next episode. Just because if I do retirements now, this episode's going to be like 30-something minutes long. So let's go up till June the 1st. Damn, that really blows that we lost already. And our AHL team also was bounced in the first round. But hopefully we could get some more good young guys in the system because we're kind of still an older team to an extent. We still need to find some good young prospects. Okay, so at June the 1st, we still don't have a Stanley Cup champion yet. And okay, so we should be right around there. Wait, did it say it? No, it didn't. 
There you go. So the Vancouver Canucks have won the Stanley Cup and the San Antonio Rampage have won the AHL. So let's take a look at those awards. And then that'll be it for this episode. I'll also show you guys the draft class again just in case. Because it's probably changed a lot since I last looked. So the Vancouver Canucks win the Stanley Cup. So Canadian team winning the Stanley Cup. That's nice. Vancouver also won the President's Trophy. And it was a Vancouver, New York Stanley Cup Finals. So we actually had the 1994 Stanley Cup Finals, but a different outcome. It's kind of interesting. But this is in like year number five. So this is technically 1999, I guess. And then in terms of individual awards, Mario Lemieux wins the Art Ross and the Hart. Brian Leach takes home the Norris for the third straight season. Robert Caron wins the Lady Bing. Some Sutton prospect for the Sens wins the Calder. Kamensky wins the Conn Smythe with Vancouver. Martin Broder wins the Vesna, his first of many probably. He also wins the Jennings. Murray Baron wins the Masterton. This Germany coach wins the Jack Adams, which is much deserved because I think that's the first time Germany's been into the second round. Mario Lemieux wins the Selkie and the Lindsay, and Rod Brindamore wins the Maurice Richard with Florida. Interesting. Okay, let's take a look at the AHL quickly, see if we have any guys down there win anything. I don't think so. Nope, we did not. Okay, good. So let's take a quick look at that draft class, and then that will be it for this episode. Hopefully there's some good prospects in this draft to help us out. We don't have the greatest pick probably in this year's draft. It's probably around like 20th, but still... So there's franchise guys, some elite guys in the earlier round, but like around 20th, let me just get there. Uh, there's some, there could be a power forward that's elite here. I don't know if he is though. Yeah, he could be. I'm going to pin him just in case. There's also this Sallow guy I'm going to pin, and I'll pin also this Tomander guy. So if you guys see anything interesting available at the draft, let me know down below. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.